Off the coast of England in the year 1707, a flotilla of warships returns home from battling the French. Suddenly, four of the ships smash into a hidden shoal of rocks. They sink in minutes. Nearly 2,000 men die in the catastrophe. And all because the sailors didn't have a trustworthy clock. A clock that could have told them where they were. A longitude clock. Latitude. Your distance north or south of the equator is easy to calculate using the positions of the stars. But the stars can't help you calculate longitude, the measure of how far east or west you are. And at sea, you need both coordinates to know exactly where you are. Even the great early explorers didn't know their longitude at sea. When Columbus set out, he just pointed his ships west across the Atlantic and sailed till he bumped into land. And so it was no surprise that these early voyagers got lost. Prolonged voyages were very expensive. The crew uh, would die of scurvy and other diseases, and uh, the merchants wouldn't get their goods as quickly, and very often there would be shipwreck. Then, in 1707, when the four British warships led by the flagship Association slammed into a reef 25 miles off the English coast, the cost in lives became too great. As a result, the British government created the so-called Board of Longitude. Then they put forth a challenge. The first person who could show the board a reliable method of calculating longitude at sea would win 20,000 pounds millions of dollars in today's money. John Harrison spent almost 50 years of his life trying to claim that prize. Harrison was a clock-making wizard from the north of England, and he knew that the secret of figuring out longitude was hidden in the tick-tock of a timekeeper. Set a clock to a local time and take that clock with you wherever you went on your voyage. Wait a minute. What's all this about clocks? Well, it's like time zones. Let's imagine we have a ship docked in Greenwich, England. It's midday, 12 o'clock noon. On board the ship, they have a clock. They set it to 12 o'clock. The ship travels westward to the New World. Several days later, they look up into the sky. It's midday, 12 o'clock. But the clock says 6 o'clock. Knowing that each hour represents 15 degrees, they know now that they are 90 degrees west of their starting point, Greenwich, England. But for this clock method to work, the timekeeper in question had to be extraordinarily accurate. Harrison would have to be able to build a clock that would lose no more than a couple of seconds each day on an official test voyage from England to the Caribbean. And that's in spite of the constant rolling of the ship and the sharp changes in temperature and moisture. No such clock had ever been built. Most people thought it was impossible. But Harrison embraced the challenge. And five years later, he finished his first longitude clock known as H1. It weighed 75 pounds. And on a preliminary test, it passed with flying colors. But for Harrison, it didn't work good enough. So what did he do? He decided to make timekeeper number two. Did it work? Well, he never even bothered trying it out because he had an idea for another timekeeper. And this time, his third timekeeper, he spent 19 years on. He was a total perfectionist. In fact, by the time Harrison finished the third clock, he had also built his fourth, which was just as accurate, but much smaller, and about the size of a large pocket watch. But by this time, the Board of Longitude was tired of his delays and his perfectionism. Many on the Board of Judges had high hopes for a system based on the position of the moon. Harrison tested his fourth clock in 1761. It performed wonderfully. But the Board still didn't want to give Harrison the award. 
Harrison's relationship with the judges was so strained that in 1766, the board took all four clocks away from him. Only after the intervention of England's King George III did Harrison get a big prize, a special award of almost 9,000 pounds. No one ever claimed the original prize money of all 20,000 pounds. But Harrison's timekeepers won in the end. Within a few years of the designer's death in 1776, any ship owner could buy a knockoff Harrison clock at a reasonable price. Most captains like to carry more than one. By the middle of the 1800s, the British Navy had four times as many longitude clocks as it had ships. The original clocks were stored in the Royal Observatory in Greenwich. And unfortunately, the basement was damp. They remained there for about 60 years until the, a subsequent astronomer royal discovered them and thought this is dreadful that we have some historical artifacts rotting here and sent them to a clockmaker in London. The clockmaker said around 1840, I can't do much to it, I'll just clean it a bit and send it back. And then they went back into another damp area where they rotted away. It wasn't until 1920 that a young naval officer offered to clean them. The task would become his life's chief accomplishment and would take 12 years in all. The first three clocks are still in working condition, but H4, Harrison's biggest triumph, does not function. In order to prevent any further deterioration, the clock's curators do not wind it. H4 ticks no longer. John Harrison's timekeepers remain in the collection of the Maritime Museum in Greenwich, England.